is fatherhood. We do not have two fathers in this commission. We only have one father. We only have one father. Inheritances are released by one father. You cannot receive an inheritance from an uncle. You cannot go to a neighbor and tell him, hey, I know you have a big land and I have no one. I have nothing. Give me a portion. He will tell you, who are you? Because sonship and fatherhood is what guarantees your inheritance. So we shall be looking at pillar number 10. This man, the subject is unveiling the power of loyalty. Brethren, I pray for you that God will open your heart Amen. to receive this truth. Amen. Every word of God is always sent to release healing. Oh, wow. It could be emotional healing. It could be mental healing. It could be bodily healing. But every time the word of God is sent, its first mission is to release healing. It is to release cure. It is to cure anything that is going on in your life. And we know that is Psalm 107 verse 20. We know after it releases healing, it delivers from destruction. It delivers you from anything that is out to destroy your life, to destroy your relationship, to destroy your commitment, to destroy your faith. When the word of God is always said, it comes to deliver something. And I pray today, as you listen to this word, please receive it. Please receive healing in the name of Jesus. If anyone has wounded you in any area, let God heal you as you hear this word. If there is anything that has been destroying your prayer life, that has been destroying your relationship with the man of God, with the altar, with each other, let this word heal you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I want to begin by letting us know loyalty connotes six things. Loyalty encapsulates six things. You can better understand loyalty by looking at these six things. Number one is obedience to authority. When someone is obedient, is obedient to the leadership, to the leader, that person is loyal. So disobedience to authority is disloyalty. That is number one. So you need to begin to look at your life and examine how obedient you are to the authority in the church, to the authority in the department that you are serving. You must check your level of obedience. Do you obey or do you argue? Do you obey or do you ignore? Because if you are not doing that, you are not loyal. And we shall be seeing the cause of the man, the effect of this loyalty. Number two. Number two is steadfastness to a cause. Steadfastness. You are immovable to a vision. Nothing can move you from the vision. Because you are loyal. We shall be looking at that much deeper shortly because that is what I'll be speaking with, with us this morning. Number three. Number three. Loyalty connotes faithfulness. Faithfulness. Loyalty is seen in faithfulness. When you are faithful to a marriage, we say that is a loyal spouse. When you are faithful in the church, we say that is a loyal person in the church. When you are loyal here, when you are faithful in your department, we say this one is loyal. Number four, loyalty is seen in your degree of allegiance. Your degree of allegiance. Allegiance. I know most of us, I don't know whether the schools nowadays still do the loyalty pledge. We used to do it in our days uh, in, in the assembly. We say uh, the loyalty uh, pledge. Does any one of you remember what it used to? Yes. Yeah. I pledge 
my loyalty to the president of the nation of Kenya and and so forth and so forth. How many of you did that? Uh -huh. That was meant to make you patriotic. It was meant for you to love Kenya. It was meant for you to value that you are a Kenyan. Loyalty is seen in allegiance. Number five. Number five. Loyalty is seen in adherence to regulations and instruction. And I don't know how we pronounce that word. Is it adherence or Madame Sabe so can help us pronounce that better? Whether it is adherence or Exactly. You have had it. <laughs> yes, that one. That one. To regulations <laughs> and instructions. If you can hear and adhere to instructions and regulations, you are loyal. If we say we have a service on Wednesday, then you adhere to that regulation and that instruction. You are loyal. If you don't come and you don't report, you are disloyal. That is now the loyalty is seen in adherence to regulation and instruction. And lastly, number six, loyalty is seen in an adulterated devotion to a vision. An adulterated devotion to a vision. That means you are a tireless supporter. You are addicted to support a vision. And you make no apology. You have no regret. You are comfortable because you are loyal. When you see the devotion of someone does not last a week before betrayal, that person is not loyal. When you are loyal, you are devoted fully to the vision. To the vision. You will not stand here and instead of talking about turning point, you are talking about high temperature ministry. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You cannot be telling us how Jumujet ministry is doing. Mm -hmm. Because you are meant to be loyal here. Wow. Wow. You are not supposed to quote the Cyprus International Ministry, uh -huh. what their bishop is saying. Uh -huh. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Loyalty. Can you imagine if you are married and every time you get home, your wife tells you the goodness of another husband. Just somebody, the, the wife says, ha, have you seen the husband of the neighbor? Ha, ha. That man is wise. That man, the way he dresses, the way he talks, the perfume he wears. I mean, that man is Superman. He's Spider-Man. He's Commando, he's Ninja. What will you do? As a man, you will open the door and then go and stay there. Go to the, the Spider-Man. Stay with that man. So, when we are talking about loyalty, I like to know it's not just loyalty in the ministry, it is loyalty everywhere. Are you ready for this? Yes, sir. Are you ready for this? Yes, Please wave to me if you are ready for this. So, I would like to lay the foundation of this series uh, in this first service and speak with us about steadfastness, which is the number two implication of loyalty. Fastness in our key verse for this series shall be First Corinthians 15 and verses 58. First Corinthians 15 and verses 58. 
I'd like you to follow with me, me very, very clearly. And I trust the Lord that as this word is coming to you, great healing will happen in your heart. Allow your mind to be healed. I know I'm speaking to people who are wounded. I know I'm speaking to people who are injured. I know I'm speaking to people who have been betrayed before. I know I'm speaking to people who probably have been exploited in the past. And therefore, your devotion is divided. Your commitment to the vision could be divided because of your previous experience. But it's my prayer that as you hear this word, you shall be healed. Now, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye what? Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What does the Amplified Version say? Like a to read uh, in several versions, as many as you can get, please amplify. You can begin with amplified, then you can put others as well. The amplified, follow me, please. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm, stay fast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, always being superior, excelling, doing more than enough. In the service of the Lord, knowing and being continually aware that your labor in the Lord is not futile, it is never wasted, or do not pass it. Purpose. Okay. From the basic Bible, with all this going for us, my dear friend, stand your ground Amen. and don't hold back. Amen. Throw yourself. Into the work of the master, Amen. confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. Oh my God, my God, are you liking this one? The NLT New Living Translation. What does it say? It says, "So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable." Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord. Hallelujah. More. More. Are you get, I just want you to get the, the impact of this verse. The NIV says, Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that you are labor in the Lord. It's not in vain. Do you have any other? Eh? So then, my dear friends, stand firm and steady. Keep busy always in your work for the Lord since you know that nothing you do in the Lord's service give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. And that is why I want to speak with us about steadfastness to a cause because this version they are all showing one thing. Be immovable. Stand firm. Abound. Be steadfast. Stand your ground. Then you throw yourself into the work of the Lord. Knowing your work, your effort is not in vain. Therefore, steadfastness is very important. And we have said that loyalty is seen when somebody is immovable. And brethren, there are so many things. There are so many things in the ministry, so many things in the ministry that will come to try to move you. Wow. There are things and there are people and there are spirits. And all of them have one mission to move you from your service to the Lord. 
And it could be somebody sitting next to you who will begin whispering things into you to make you decline or diminish your effort. It could be a spirit will enter you to try to make you movable. You remember Luke 22 verse 3? Satan entered Judas and ruined his life. So when we are talking about loyalty, you watch people, you watch circumstances, and you watch spirits. Because a spirit could be sent to make sure you go down, to make sure you move out of your place. Remember, we always drive where God allocates you. And since Satan does not want us to drive, he will want to move you and put you in the wrong place. So that your driving can be strangled. But none of you shall be moved out of this place in Jesus' name. I said, none of you shall be moved out of this place. Receive grace to be steadfast. Receive grace to throw yourself fully into the work of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is very clear that many believers have become ministerial dropouts. Many people have become ministerial dropouts for many reasons. Pastors have dropped out of ministries and joined others and split others. Stewards have hoped from one ministry to another for so many reasons. Some may be legitimate, others may be demonically oriented movement so that you do not enjoy the power of loyalty. Of course, there are several things. The number one thing that normally moves people is pride. Pride. When you are proud, you cannot be corrected, you cannot be rebuked, you cannot handle greatness. When the Lord begins to lift you, when blessings begin to come, pride takes over. And when pride comes, it always comes before a fall. That is the first thing. Number two thing that has really fatalized disloyalty is impatience. Impatience. You want to join the ministry and you want the ministry to hit 10,000 in a year. And you are doing nothing to move the church to that level. There are people who come here and say, there are not very many. Let me go and wait when there will be many. It's impatience. It's impatience. Mushrooms grow under 24 hours. They are ready for harvest under 24 hours. But they are very perishable. And there are trees for you to get a fruit. You got to wait for over 20 years. And they last hundreds of years. We must cultivate patience in the vision. Thing to move the vision forward, you must not complain about growth. If you are doing nothing, but if you have brought five people, you have brought ten people, you are evangelizing at your own time, you are fasting and praying for the vision. Now you can begin to say, What is wrong? What is not happening? But if you are just watching from afar, please shut up and don't criticize or even see any fault in the vision. Did you hear me? The other thing that fatalizes disloyalty is familiarity. Familiarity. When you become too familiar with the, with the man of God, when you become too familiar with the commission, it is very easy for disloyalty to come inside of you. You are too familiar. You know how the finances are run. You know the department. You know the leaders of each department. You know the people who give. You know the people who don't give. You know, when you become familiar with the press team, you begin to take them casually. Familiarity breeds or gives birth to disloyalty. And that is why, brethren, these things, you must watch activism. And then at times, it's what we I call unrealistic expectations. You set unrealistic expectations. The man of God should not be eating food. He should be fasting to hear God. 
The man of God must always be telling us, that says the Lord. He must preach and vibrate and fall and move in reverse so that we can know the power of God is moving. These unrealistic expectations have made many people to leave churches. Not knowing is a spirit of disloyalty. Now, brethren, notice this. This message is so important in your life because it is the first sin that Satan committed. This message. He just became disloyal. He was so loyal to God that he got to a place. He became too familiar with God. He saw God. He saw God. Happy. He saw God receiving things until he said, I should be the one receiving that. I'm the one linking him to be this glorious. He said, I will lift myself above the hills. I shall be like the most high God. And God decided to draw him to the lowest. This is the first sin with the toughest punishment. This one. So brethren, I'd like you to run away from any symptom or any sign of disloyalty. Wait to me if you're receiving something. Let me tell you, brethren. There is a trend that is fully established in this nation of ours. And this trend is the trend of not staying long enough anyway. Is a trend. That is why they are saying in this nation, singlehood has escalated to levels that have never existed before. Singlehood. People who have entered into marriage and came out. They entered into marriage with pomp and glamour and limousines and four storage cakes and then they break away under the years. The court cases that have to do with the separation, there are so many. Because people do not want to stay long enough anywhere. It's a spirit that is moving all over. If you look at the political parties, you will see the same. Somebody is in this party and any minute can shift. Today he is praising this party and cursing and denigrating every other party. Then the next time he changes location and says that party, they have no direction, they have no any, they have no vision, they are just dictatorial and so forth and so forth. But this one, this one is sober. The vision is clear. There is respect here. And, and so forth and so forth. I feel what I envision as a politician will be accomplished here. Give him time. Then he shifts, come, and says, these political parties are fake. I'm beginning my... It is normal. It is not. It's a spirit of disloyalty that has removed steadfastness. Please do not feel guilty. If I use any example that may apply to you directly, this word is meant to heal you. Amen. This word is meant to deliver you from this spirit that will bring terrible punishment to anybody who does not adhere to this word. Most of us have gone to more than three churches. I don't want you to lift your hand. But I know there are people who have gone to more than three, three churches. Some have gone to 20. I met somebody who said, I've gone to churches all over and there is no man of God in the city. Do you think that is true? No. Can that even be true? No. Now, if you meet a member who has never been a pastor and think there are no pastors in the city, there are demons inside that pastor. I can tell you for sure. How can God leave the city without his men? That, that shows there is a problem inside that person. Let me surprise you. Right today, there are many people who will not go to church anywhere. They have no allegiance anywhere. But they say they are born again. They have no father, spiritual father. They have no man of God, they believe. They can keep offering anywhere. What do you expect of the life of such a person? So brethren, I want us to break the trend in 
this nation, in this church, and become loyal to the vision. Yes, yes. We become loyal to turning point. If you don't want to be loyal to turning point, please come to me. I will release you to wherever you will be loyal. But by all means, don't be disloyal. Because the punishment of disloyalty is the worst. Is the worst. We will learn that in the course of the month. A few weeks ago, I was talking to a bishop from U.S. And this bishop has a has churches in the U.S. He's a Kenyan. So he pastors the highest percentage of the members of the church are Kenyans in the U.S. So he was speaking and we were talking about loyalty and so forth. And he said, let me tell you a question. Kenyans who have left this nation and have gone abroad, they carry the same spirit. Even abroad, they don't stick. They don't stay. They grow, they grow somewhere, and then they live unceremoniously. And every time they, they want to leave, before they leave, they soil, they dirtify, they pollute, they do things and say things to destroy, then they leave. And where they go, they don't shut up. They speak evil about the man of God. They speak evil about the church and so forth. So they are welcome. But before, several years ago, again, they noticed there is something wrong. Let me reveal to you, brethren. There is no church or now that is perfect. Wow. Because every church is run by men. Hallelujah. And every man has a weakness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you find somebody tell you, Something is wrong. We are only dependent on the help of God. I am who I am by the grace of God. So please begin to organize yourself and be ready to be steadfast. Three weeks ago again, in Ghana, there was a minister's conference. And the Kenyans who attended that, that conference, they posed a question. They posed a question to the senior bishop who was ministering in to the ministers from all over the world. They asked a question. They said, what do you think is the hindrance of ministries in Kenya? Because in Kenya, we do not have a globe, a man of God with a global influence. There is no one. With any global, the way today we can talk about Bishop David Oedipo, we can talk about uh, Dr. Bishop uh, Mensa or Otabi from Ghana, we can talk about Bishop Tudor Bisma from Zimbabwe, we can talk about uh, Pastor Chris Boyakilome, we can speak about Papa Enoch uh, uh, Adeboy, we can speak about Matthew Ashimolo in London. He's in London, but we can quote what he's saying from here. We can quote men of God like prophetess Juanita Bynum, Bishop T.D. James. They are, they are ministries, they are impacting the world. What is wrong with our nation? So they asked that question. And they, they, they said, for only two reasons. Number one, this bishop said, Kenyans don't honor their fathers. It's normal for me to pray for you, you rise, and then you beat me down. Mm, mm, mm. In this nation. Yes, sir. It is normal for me to lift you from nothing to something by prayer, by word, by loving you, by encouraging you, and any minute you can bite my very hand. Yes, In this nation, it's normal. The second reason, this bishop said, Kenyans are not loyal. They are not loyal. Now, having said that, can you imagine, brethren, if this vision is what is meant to build your destiny in your family, are you supposed to betray this vision? If this vision is the one that will give you the company that you 
be desiring. This vision is the one that will deliver you from demonic attacks and diseases. Are you supposed to fight me? Are you supposed to fight this one? Yet, because of the spirit of this Lord, it has become a normal thing. I've never forgotten one man from this commission. It was a Wednesday service. I ministered very powerful. And then he came to me as I was walking to the office. And he said, Sir, I am ready to die. Yes, sir. He was crying. Mm. He said, I'm ready to die. I have suffered enough. Mm. He had chronic tuberculosis. He said, I am ready to die, sir. Tonight I'm ready to die. I was so confused. How can I minister such a powerful word? And then he tells me after the word, he wants to die. I talk to him, uh, Pastor Grace, and then we say, Your problem, hand it over to us. Mm. Then we told him, Come and stay with us in our house. Mm. Let's see. I told him, Let me see the devil that will come and kill you inside my house. Mm. We relocated him from his house into my house. And my wife nursed him back to hell. In seven days, he went back to one of the hospitals here. They checked him. They told him he has no tuberculosis. Mm. Totally clean, totally clean. Under three months mm -hmm. after the miracle, yes, the brother left mm. without even saying goodbye. The reason, because I called him, I was so much and I said, what happened? He said, you rebuked that brother very harshly. Yes, sir. I cannot stay with you. Mm. And what was the rebuke? That brother was commanding around people who are older than him, mm. forcing them to carry instruments. He stood there, he told people who are married, don't dare be here until all those instruments are put in the stop. I told him, no, that's not how you talk to people who are older than you. I told him, go and apologize. The man who had tuberculosis left because I've rebuked. It's not, no, it's the spirit at work. It's the spirit at work. So please watch out. Watch out. Today you are celebrating. Apostle is very wise. Apostle is a blessing. This is a gift of God that God has sent in my life. Let's see whether you will still say that after 10 years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Amen. So this is what has made many people become spiritual dropouts. May you not drop out of this commission. Amen. I said, may you not drop out of this commission. Amen. Until the end guarantees medals. Amen. Stay until the end guarantees medals. Dropouts never get certificates. You cannot <laughs> get into university. Then uh, around second year you say, these things are too much. These things are too much. I cannot handle it. Then you drop out. Then you begin saying, you know, I'm a graduate from KU. Where is the certificate? I didn't wait to get it. I just got bored, but I was uh, of the class 2019. If you dropped out, you cannot say you are a graduate. You are a dropout. But the challenge with dropouts, they never say they drop out. They always like to present themselves as if they completed the course. Brethren, may you not be a dropout. May you not be a dropout. David, in the Bible, he steadfastly followed a king who had demons. Please look at me. He steadfastly believed and served and followed a king who was known to have demons. In the whole nation, demons that were throwing tantrums anyhow, and for 13 years, not one year, for 13 years, he followed him. He would say to him, for the demons to leave, the demons would leave. But in the middle of one of those services, the king wanted to kill him. 
and then he started running away. While the king was mobilizing the army to kill him. And David continued to be loyal to a king that was rejected by God. A king that was God had already rejected. But David said, if he is refusing to leave that seat, I cannot unseat him. I will wait. And as he waited, he continued serving. Are you understanding this? Steadfastness. One day, where he was hiding, the king came and David cut just a portion, just a portion of his cloth. And the guilt that David had was too much. He repented. He said, okay, have mercy on me. I cut a portion of your cloth to tell you I have no problem with you. And after 13 years, when Saul committed suicide, somebody came and said he's the one who has killed David. And you know, I mean Saul, he said he's the one who killed Saul. And David asked him a very serious question. Why were you not afraid to touch the Lord's anointed? He was calling him the Lord's anointed with the demons. It is in this nation. Members have crucified men of God. Mercilessly. Mercilessly. Somebody say that the man of God said this. Please never make any comment or any remark regarding any man of God. You don't know the degree of anointing they come. I've always encouraged. If you're not must talk, please talk about Manchester United. Talk about Liverpool. You are free to talk about Chelsea. Don't, don't talk about men of God because you could kill your children by talking about men of God. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. So, disloyalty removes steadfastness. When you are loyal, you are steadfast. You can be with me today and forever. Dr. James Sevier is one of the revered authors of very many books. He has served Dr. Kenneth Copeland 50 years. 50 years. Some of us were not even 50. Can you imagine staying with one person? Serving that person 50 years. He has become very great himself, but he still serves Dr. Copeland. Bishop David Abiel has served Bishop David Oyedepo uh, 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 37 years and counting. Show me somebody who has served a pastor in this nation 30 years, 20 years, 10 years. Last year, I had somebody who just left a church that is not very far from here. He came with a small business. The man of God prayed, blessed him, lifted him, and to a level of having serious, major, multi million business in town. Then last year, he came to the man of God with an envelope of 10,000. And he brought to the man of God, he said, sir, I feel the grace to work under you is over. I want to go join another big ministry in town where people of my status are. Can you imagine? Is that normal? I mean, that person has served almost 10 years with that man, but because he's now a filthy millionaire, he wants to go to a church where there are more millionaires. And forget the one who believed in him when he, could, he did not even know what a million was. Wow. Wow. It's a spirit present. Wow. Say, in the name of Jesus, name of you Jesus. spirit of disloyalty, lose your address. Leave me alone. If you are any disloyal in this commission, I forgive you. But after today, after hearing the truth, the repercussions of disloyalty will follow you. The, the Bible says, in the days of ignorance, God overlooked. So I want to assume you did not know these truths. So I'm teaching you these truths so that after this truth, whatever happens to you, you are to blame. 
I know you can't say amen to that. Let me rephrase it. I have forgiven you for any disloyalty anywhere. Whether you spoke against me, whether you spoke against Pastor Grace, whether you spoke against my leaders, or you spoke against any department, consider yourself forgiven. But after hearing this truth, the full force of the power of loyalty and disloyalty, you shall get the fruit I have fold in Jesus' name. Now, Elisha steadfastly followed Elijah 21 years before receiving double motion. 21 years. He followed 21 years. In Gilgal, they told him, leave him, join us. In the ministry, you will always find people who are telling you, our place is better. Our place is better. But steadfast people who are loyal, they always know where they are is the best. They always know that where they are is the best. So, watch out, brethren. Let me give you this. About nine years ago, about nine years ago, this is very, very sad. Papa's wife was under a terrible attack I told you to read her book, Delivered from Destruction, so that you understand the intensity of the attack. She was about to die. And when Papa was praying, he made a vow before God. He said, God, I will serve you faithfully, but please don't take my wife. He said, I will not mention anything about the condition of my wife. I will not stop serving you in her condition. Mm. Do you know how difficult it is to serve when your wife is dying? Mm. Is not talking, cannot do anything, is on wheelchair. Can you imagine? Still able to preach. I was in the conference and Bishop was preaching and I was wondering, can I be able to do that when my wife is sick? And I have to today, I will forever respect Dr. David Raymond because that is another level. Now, during that time of that terrible attack, 150 senior pastors surrendered their resignation. They want to leave the ministry. They want to leave the ministry. And they began to spread stories that Papa's wife died a long time and is already buried, and Papa is covering it up. As if that is not enough, they say Papa has already married his secretary. His secretary. And the newspapers caught that information and wrote it. So Papa called a meeting of the pastors to try to tell them, brethren, I was calling you so that you be an encouragement to me, so that you pray for my wife. And this happened that you say I'm married my secretary. My wife is dead. So he called the wife at that moment was in London hospital. Can you imagine organizing the cameras? to be put in the world so that in her weakness she can speak so that pastors can stop what they were doing. That's what she did. Then after she recovered, one hand could not straighten up completely. The same people and the members, they began to say, she's paralyzed one side. Please don't talk things that you don't know. Yes, sir. And don't allow anybody to tell you what they are supposed to know. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Papa was supposed again to do something. Because one time somebody ran from one side and came straight, wanted to go shake that hand to confirm. So 
Baba said, okay, let me allow her to preach so that she can hold the mic with that hand for everybody to know. Why should the man of God be put through all this? Because of the spirit of this Lord. Please, if you're getting something, wave to me. This loyalty is all over the scripture. Elijah's first servant in 1 Kings 19, verse 3, did not get anointed because he dropped out on the way. He abandoned the man of God when he most needed him. When he most needed him. Yet this servant is the one who saw most of the miracles of Elijah. He saw heaven closed from raining. He witnessed the raven that was feeding Elijah. He is the one who saw it. He ate that bread with Elijah. He saw the widow of Zarephath food being supernaturally supplied. He saw fire call from heaven. He's the one who was sent seven times to check whether there are signs of the clouds. But when he was most needed, he abandoned the man of God. The Bible says, and when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah. Read that last portion. And left his servant. And left his servant there. That is the last time that servant is mentioned. Every abandonment diminishes your returns. Every time you abandon integrity, you abandon prayer, you abandon a vision, don't expect to rise. That is the last time this servant is mentioned. He could not be steadfast. His place was taken by prophet Elisha. May your place not be taken by another. Amen. Let me say that again. May your place not be taken by another. Amen. I am not tired of any one of you. Amen. You have a serious place in my heart. Amen. Please do not abandon your place. Your place. Amen. My heart is wide enough Amen. to have thousands. Don't abandon your post. Now, may I say something serious? At times, you can be loyal in the beginning. But if you lack steadfastness, because Satan does not give up, is it? The Bible says, and Satan left Jesus for a while. So every victory you get is for a while. He is coming back with more attacks. That's why the other day I told you, please don't know about celebrate victories. Celebrate a bit and then keep that. Because you can win and then Satan recruits. You know the story about when Jesus was saying that when demons are cast out, they normally leave and then they go looking for reinforcement. Then they come back with the worst spirits. So, brethren, be careful because your victory last year might spell your doom this year. That is why you must be steadfast. Say, I will be steadfast. Will be steadfast. Now, in 2 Samuel 18, verses 9 and 10, we hear the story of Joab. Joab was the commander of the army of David. He was very loyal during the rebellion of Absalom. And Absalom made the servants of David and Absalom rode upon a mule and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak and his head was caught, uh, uh, his head caught hold of the oak and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth and the mule that was under him went away. Verse 10. And a certain man saw it and told Joel and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hang in an oak. Look at verse 14. Verse 14 of that verse. What happened? Verse 14 quickly. Then Job said, 
I may not tarry as with thee. And he took three darts or arrows in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. Joab is killing the son of the king for disloyalty. The son was disloyal to the father and Joab could not tolerate it. He killed the son of the king. And David, did you read that story? David had begged, please spare my son. I will forgive his rebellion. But Job could not take it. But now, the same same man in First Kings chapter 1, verse 5 to 7, see the same man. See the same man. The Bible says, Then Adonia, the son of Hagel, exalted himself, saying, I will be king, and prepared him with chariots and horsemen and fifty men to run before him. Verse 6. And his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, Why hast thou done so? And he also was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after Absalom. The seven. And he conferred. Look, he's conspiring with Job. The same man who was allergic to disloyalty. Now, he's conspiring. With Adonia, Job, the son of Zeruia, and with Abdiada the priest, and they following Adonia. What did they do? They helped a rebel. So, last year's loyalty does not guarantee this year's loyalty. You may not like this, but I know I'm healing someone. Don't be confused that somebody was very loyal last year. This year, that person will be a Judas. Because every one of us, we are not immune. Satan can attack you any minute. And it's my prayer for you that you shall not fall victim to any demonic attack in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So loyalty today does not necessarily mean loyalty tomorrow. You have to work on it. Work on it. Work on being loyal. When temptations come, when things come, when spirits come, try to make you disloyal. Please always go into prayer. Consult the man of God. I don't understand what is happening to me. I am no longer excited when you are ministering. I am no longer this. I am no longer this. I will be ready to help you. Because I know how this spirit works. Hallelujah. Can you imagine this? Fastness of Elisha in the story in his story in 2 Kings chapter 2. He followed a very discouraging leader. It begins by talking about God has spoken to Elijah to go to Gilgal. Then the guy took Gilgal, and the man of God tells Elisha, the media, God has spoken to me, not to you, to me, to go to Gil, I mean to Bethel. You remain here. And Elisha's steadfastness was, as surely as the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. He forced himself to be steadfast. Then they go to Bethel. Again in Bethel, the man of God said, please remain here. Because God has sent me to Jericho. Again he spoke. As the Lord your God live and as so as my soul live I will not remain I will follow you you might need something and I want to be there so that you can send me they got again to Jericho and they repeated the same thing then they go to Jordan and it is after that Elijah asked what is it that you want because you are steadfast steadfast people qualify for rewards Steadfast people always qualify. Immovable people qualify for reward. Look at verse 11 of that. You see, the steadfastness of Elisha demanded supernatural separation for him to separate from Elijah. He could not be separated by people, by words, by negative things. He was so immovable, God had to send a child to come and separate them. Can you imagine that? If it came to pass us, they still went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and packed 
acted them bold as hell. And Elijah went up by a while with So the while wind is the one that took Elijah and the chariot supernaturally separated Elisha and Elijah. Can you imagine that degree of devotion? I pray in this commission. I shall have people who will be so connected to me and to this vision that nothing will separate you. No one will separate you. Even Satan will not be able to separate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, I would like you to be very, very conscious of every promise you have given me. Of every word that you speak to me concerning me, concerning the ministry. Be conscious. You may forget what you told me, but I do remember. There are people who came, they say, Daddy, I have been looking for somebody with a grace like you are. I have finally found rest. Mm -hmm. Now you can come to me. And within no time, the individual has forgotten. And leaves without even saying goodbye. Be careful this law. Oh, let me show you something. Before that, what is the use of a husband who makes a vow in tears during the wedding? Wow. Until then, you are smart. You're my salt. You're my oxygen. You are my everything. And then, after the vow, during the wedding, that person begins cheating on you. What is the use of such a person? Now, Peter, in Luke 22, verse 31 to 34, Peter had told Jesus, I will be ready to die for you. <laughs> he said, and the Lord says, I was able to be hosted and have desired to have you, that he may sift you as we. Carry on, verse 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith faileth not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Carry on. And he saying unto him, Be with me, Lord, I am ready to go with thee. Born into prison. Now, look at the same chapter, verse 54 to 62. Let's hear whether he remembers what he says. Always remember the promises that you say. The words of commitment. Remember them. Read with me. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house and Peter followed a fire. Okay. And when they had given a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain man beheld him as he sat by the fire and honestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. What was his, his response? No, I thought he said he will be ready to go to prison. I thought he said he will die with him. What is he doing? He has denied him and is a woman. I know him not. Give me rest. I don't know this man. <laughs> Carry on. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. What did Peter say? Me. I know if you are confused. Maybe you are confusing me with someone else. This is the same man who said he will be ready to go to prison. He will be ready to die. Uh -huh. Carry on. And about the space of one hour <laughs> after another, confidently I have found the same. Over to this fellow also was with him. For he is a Galilean. Now listen to him. Read with me. Peter said, What? Man, I do not know what you people are speaking about. And immediately, why did he stay in the cockroach? Now, if you follow the account of Matthew, the account of Mark and John, they all wrote this in space. That means what 
you say is also remembered by others. Wow. If you forget, others still remember yes, sir. what you said when they were seated, when you were seated. Yes, say, Apostle Paul is a man of God. So when you come back and you begin to say, no, he's not a man of God, he's a man of the devil, they will remember what you said. Are you hearing me? Please remember. I always remember what people tell me. Even when I don't remind you. I remember. You dare me. Just follow me ask me. What have I ever promised? And I'll tell you. I'll tell you. The year you came. The second month. That's why whenever you visit me in the office, I'm writing. Yes. And I won't stop. I, you, I, I like to hear what you are saying and I notice. I know them down. I know them down. So all I need to do is to go back to my notebook and I remember. So the, this and this came. So and so. The question was this. The challenge was this. This was the prayer. This is the commitment this person gave. Then I watch you. After several years or after several months, then I see you behaving as if you are. You never came to the office. <laughs> you came and said, I told you, brethren, please, please be available. You said, I will do my best. I will not miss. And you have become missus. <laughs> yes. All right. Now, allow me to show us three tests of steadfastness. Three tests. Your immovability in the vision shall be tested by three things. Number one is time. Number one is time. Many people change their mind and commitment given time. Probably that is why you should not be ready to commit yourself before you allow passage of time. Don't be ready to commit yourself before the passage of time. In this commission, you don't become a member of this commission instantly. In this commission, we have taught you, we give you three months to evaluate, to consider and decide so that we can now say you have agreed with this issue. You are ready to work with us. Because there are people who, who stood without anybody to ask them. And they said, from today, I'll be a member of this church. All of you, you know them, isn't it? Yes, sir. Where are they? Steadfastness is tested through time. How long can you stick? In John 6, verse 66 and 67, Jesus had been followed by so many people. Then he taught a message they did not understand. Or they were not ready to understand. The Bible says, after he taught, he was teaching the communion. He was teaching about taking his body and drinking his blood. But what they knew was we slaughter a lamb without blemish. Then we eat its flesh as a symbolism of the Passover. So Jesus said, now that I have come, I am the Passover. You shall eat my body and drink my blood. What, did, what happened? From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Records will quote a certain message. Rebels will always quote a certain message. You remember, for example, I remember, I have never forgotten this. I lost a man that I love up to today. He was a very senior man. He was a chairman of a reverend board. A very senior man. And I lost him on account. I taught about generational curses and generational blessing. So he said he does not believe in curses. He does not believe the Akasis. So he called me and said, stop this preaching or I'll leave. I told him, sir, I cannot stop. I have suffered the effect of curses. The members suffering the effect of curses. 
I want to move them to blessings. He left. He quoted that message. In this church, one day I, I just called a few people I thought were very loyal and I said, let me teach them how to be honorable. What about six? I just don't can remember that. I thought about being honorable, honoring the men of God, honoring people in the church. That man, when he came, they had been barren six years. No children. So I prayed with him. I told him, I tell me like this next year, he will have a child. They got a daughter. Then I taught honoring the men of God. This man boldly came to me. He said, I don't believe in honor. Mm. I cannot honor you. Mm. And he left. Can you imagine? These things happen. Didn't I tell you about a lady from another church who became sick, admitted in one of the hospitals here, needed blood transfusion. The hospital did not have the blood bank for the kind of blood she needed. So her apostle when I'm told, please, could you check what my blood type is? Miraculously, the blood type of the apostle coincided with the blood type of the member. So, the apostle said, please save the life of my member. And he gave his own blood and he saved the life of the lady. Meanwhile, the man of God was busy, so he just delegated some leaders, please visit our member so and so in hospital. So, what number is so the apostle never visited the lady. When she came out of the hospital, she did not go back to church. She joined the next door church. Reason, apostle did not visit me in the hospital. Can you imagine? So this apostle was making fun. I said, she went with my blood. <laughs> she went. That's how wicked people can be. Can you imagine that? Please be grateful. Receive a heart of gratitude. Amen. Don't take my fasting for you casually. Yes, Don't take my prayers for you casually. Yes, so time is what we will tell. During this time that many disciples left, Judas did not leave. Judas remained. Yes, <laughs> so if you survive the first disloyalty, Watch out. <laughs> Judas did not survive the, survive the next. By Luke 22, verse 3, Satan entered. Oh, it took the entrance of Satan to make Judas to betray his master. And he sold him the cheapest price. The cheapest price. The cheapest price. Hallelujah. You will hear funny accusations. Did you see how Apostle is laughing with that lady? Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to be crying uh -huh. when I greet you? Uh -huh. Please, give, give us a break. Yes, <laughs> Did you see Apostle the way he greeted and shook that hand? Okay, so I'll be greeting you from far. So that, no, please, watch out. This is a spirit. Am I supposed to hate you? You know, you tell me. Am I supposed to serve people that I hate? Am I not supposed to love every one of you? Yes, sir. Brethren, listen to me. I am serving God under a covenant. Under a covenant. No matter how beautiful you are, trust me. Even if you will come naked, mm -hmm. I have made a vow to my wife. Yes, sir. And I have my daughters as witnesses. Yes, sir. I can never betray my wife. Amen. I can never betray my daughters. I want, I told you, brethren, one of my motivations is that one day God will tell me, you good and faithful son. That is my goal. I'm working towards that. One day I told my wife. The day you hear a beating a lady, don't ask the reason. Yes, sir. Just know that lady was attacking on me. Yes, sir. I'm ready to repent for beating. Yes, 
instead of fornicating and adulterating. Mm. Yes, that's how serious I am. So if you come with your books three quarter, you just wasting your life. Uh-huh. I'm telling you. There's somebody who started serving me in the office in Tanzania sometime. I don't know what her intention was, but I noticed she changed her dressing as soon as she was appointed to, to serve me in the office. And she started coming with the books almost out. I told Pastor Grace, I don't want to see this lady in this office again. And the lady insisted, no, that is where I feel called to serve. We told her, we are calling you afresh yeah. into cleaning department. <laughs> Brethren, Judas later betrayed, but when the first group was betrayed, she was not there. He was not there. May you overcome the test of time. Amen. May you overcome the test of time. Amen. Will you be there when everyone else is gone? How much longer will you last in tiny point? Can you give us a hint? One day, my pastors did not know what I was doing. But I asked them, if turning point dies, mm-hmm. where will you go? Uh-huh. Innocently, one pastor stood and said, me, I just go to ministry. Yeah. So he had a plan B. Yeah. He was serving me and he had a plan B. Yes, Instead of saying, it cannot die. Yes. He said he had a plan B. I looked at him mm. in this belief. Mm. Please, ignore plan B. Destroy plan C. Don't have any other option. So let's work on doing this. Yes. You have jumped enough. Settle down now. Settle here. Settle. Let's work together. Will you do that for me? Number two test. So that I finish. Number two test is distance. Distance. Distance is another test. For steadfastness. Galatians 4, verses 18. Distance is a very serious test. The Bible says, but it is good to be zealous, seriously affected, always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. It's one, one thing to say things when I'm around, when I'm next to you. What do you say when I'm not next to you? What do you say? Uh, if Paul, we can be together and then you tell Daddy you are very patient, Daddy you are this, Daddy you are that. Now, then I leave you. What will you go tell him? Will you go say the same to Eddie? Or when you go to Eddie, you begin to say, also is very proud. He refuses to speak Swahili. And his Swahili is very good. <laughs> what will you say? I want you to see distance has a way of revealing whether you are loyal or not. So, if somebody brings trash to you, ask that person, can you repeat the same in the presence of a person? If that person cannot, please rebuke that person in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Has a way of revealing loyalty. If your husband walks away, far, are you loyal to your marriage? Mm-hmm. Can you be trusted even when he's away? Mm-hmm. Or oh, he will have to keep on calling and asking, Where are you? Mm-hmm. I had a, a lady because the husband noted these phones, you can carry them anywhere. So he decided he will always be calling this landline. There was a landline. <laughs> the, the broadband one, you know. So the, the, the wife decided to be carrying the broadband inside the, the, the handbag. <laughs> so that when the, 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 the man says, call, 
He says, Where are you? I'm just around, I'm cleaning. But she has already traveled with a blood band. Jesus is a test. Yes, sir. It's a test. Please don't be double sided. If you are a lion, remain a lion. If you are a snake, then let's know that you are a snake. Then we will keep our guard. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you people who have stayed with me long enough? By now you ought to know whether I'm a genuine man of God or I'm pretending. Mm. By now. Mm. You can tell whether I'm genuine or I'm not. So Apostle Paul admonished continued loyalty in his absence. When I travel, do you refuse to come to church because I'm not there? Because if you don't, because I'm away, you are this Lord. You have made me your God. You are worshipping me. Instead of worshipping the God of your father. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do you give offering when somebody else asks for offerings or you wait for me? Be loyal even in my house. Be loyal. Some say nice things to the leader when he's out, when he's there. But they say terrible, destructive, and demeaning things in his absence. If you meet anyone telling you negative things about me, about Pastor Grace, about my leaders, about the church, please know the spirit that is at work inside that person is from Satan. You can rebuild that person or you can help that person or you can expose that person. Okay? Praise the Lord. Amen. Brethren, why this is so important is the only way for the ministry to expand is for people to continue being steadfast and faithful whether the leader is present or absent. That is how the ministry grows. In this commission, I've been treated to some funny things. We organize a conference, people give money for the conference, then they don't come. This is not. How can we give money towards something that is meant to build us, then 40% of the people don't attend? It's wrong. It's wrong. Let us be loyal. Now, final. Number three test. Now, this is the toughest fire. Fire. Fire tests loyalty. We can know your loyalty in terms of Christ. Fire represents Christ. Fire represents challenges. Fire represents when you don't understand what I'm doing or what I'm preaching. Because at times I will teach something that you've never heard. I will teach something that is probably higher than you. And loyalty will be seen even in that time. During that time, I told you Jesus was left in John 6, 6 by so many people. In some few verses down there, Jesus has the disciples. Do you also want to leave? They say, Where else do we go? You have the words of life. In other words, Peter was saying, we also don't understand it, but we have no intention of living. We know with the time we will understand. Never fight new things. Wow. What you don't understand, don't fight. Yes, sir. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. You'll be ashamed later. Yes. Many years ago, Bishop Lai said something I'll never forget. He said, that is very careful when talking about a revelation he does not have. When something is new to him, he's very careful to say anything. Because just because something is new, it does not mean it's wrong. It only means he does not know it. Yes, sir. I've never forgotten that. Mm. I was just a young man, and I remember that. If you don't know about the anointing oil, just don't talk about it. Mm. Just talk about what you know. Mm. If you don't know about the Holy Communion, don't fight it. Please just, just talk about what you know. 
If you don't know about the covenant of salt, don't fight it. Just keep quiet. You don't know about it. So in terms of those challenges, those challenges, that is when loyalty shall be tested. One day, it was December 2004. I was given a seven days notice to vacate the hall that we were using to minister. The church was nearly 400 people that time. 400 people. And I had seven days to locate another one. I was so confused. I didn't know what to do. I checked all over. The, the whole rent that day, that time, was equivalent to 1,500. And we were not having enough money with 400 people. We were not raising that money. So I found a hall that I was supposed to pay 10,000. Now I was not affording 1,500. But out of desperation, we agreed with my wife, let's take this hall. God will provide. When we took that hall, of the 400 people, only 80 followed a distance of less than 2 kilometers away. Walking distance from the former hall. They could not follow. I went with 80 people. Why? In the times of challenges, that is when your true color is known. In the time of crisis, that is when your true color is noticed. In the times of fire, that is when you can be known who you really are. Brethren, I challenge that. Please, let us adapt the spirit of immovability. Let us be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in good works, knowing our labor in the law is not in vain. Will you do that? Yes. Will you do that? Yes. Now I know you are receiving healing right now. Amen. Your head is getting here. Amen. Maybe there was a wrong information that you had been fed by anyone. May that information evaporate in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace that you lost, may you recover today. Amen. The joy that you have lost, may you recover today. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Any indecisiveness that has been put in you, may it evaporate as well in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray the Spirit of God May the Spirit of God give you peace. Amen. May the Spirit of God renew your commitment. Amen. Renew your devotion. Amen. Renew your love for the vision. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May you be rejuvenated Amen. to serve than before. Amen. May you ashamed the devil that wanted to ruin your life. Amen. May you ashamed the purpose of the wicked one Amen. that wanted to ruin your relationship with the altar. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Give Jesus a mighty hand of praise.